When we're building a new website in Squarespace, there's one factor that's often overlooked, how quickly the website loads. We're gonna be using a website called Compressor.io and I will be taking you through each step of the way, showing how you can download an image from Squarespace, upload them to Compressor.io, set the perfect compression level for each image and then re-upload to the website. If this sounds like a lot of work, not a problem you can upload them to compress.io before you even upload to Squarespace if you want to be competing at the top of Google for very competitive keywords like Web Design UK. Little details like the load speed of your website are really, really important. Always look at the balancing act. Also think of the number of photos that you have on your website. You'll even be able to compress images for news stories, especially the thumbnails that you may want to feed through to your homepage. But most importantly, we're going to be showing you how to get your homepage to really zip when it comes to loading it quickly on both mobile and desktop devices. Let's crack on. Okay, so just to quickly recap, we're going to take one of the images from this website. And I think we're going to take one of the images here from the blog. We're going to upload it to a website called compressor.io, as shown here. And then we're going to re-upload via the admin area to our Squarespace website. What I'm going to do first is just show you the image downloader tool I use. This is an optional step. It really depends on whether you're looking to download a background image. So in Squarespace, this is 7.0, but even in 7.1, you'll find that there are panels behind sections of the pages where you can't always download the background image. Whilst the foreground image, you've got the option to right click and save image as on a PC. So with that in mind, image downloaders can be really handy. This is a Chrome extension. So obviously I'm using Chrome here, but you can get similar extensions for Mozilla Firefox. Here, it'll just bring us all the images that we can, will want to download in this case, we're going to download the studio picture here. Oop. Try that again, shall we? So we can locate the image, select it, and when we see the tick box, you can select multiple images at the same time if you want to. In this case, we're just going to download the one. And what that will do is just download them to your downloads location. If you select multiple, it will download them in one large batch, and that's a tool we use a huge amount, especially when we're transferring content from an old website to a new shiny Squarespace site. Okay, so with that all in mind, we've carried out step one, which is downloading our image. So we can jump across to compressor.io. Now we can either find the image in a folder on our computer. Okay, so I'm just, I only record part of the screen because this is an ultra wide screen and the ratio wouldn't really help. So. What I'm doing though is I'm just finding the folder on my computer, then finding the image and then dragging it into this box. Alternatively, you can just select the file file, the file manager tool here. So I've done that a little bit quick. There is essentially three different settings for compression that we can choose here. And we can also see that this image, the image types available are JPEG, PNG, SVG, GIF, and WebP. Pretty much everything you need to be considering about when you're looking to shrink images for websites. So we can see here now that this was a large image uploading and Squarespace hasn't done a great job of shrinking that down. So just on this one image alone, we've started at three quarters of a megabyte and we've managed to shrink it by 72%. That's just one image and it just shows the importance of getting good compression on images early on to really speed up the load speed of our website, which is great for Google. It's also great um, for the end user as well. So if I click download, that image is now downloaded. It's got another bracket in. It's probably good practice to rename that image once it's downloaded before you bring it back into Squarespace. Now you may be thinking, do I need to do this every single time. No, this is a kind of a retrofit approach where we've already got the images uploaded to the website and we need to go through and just make sure that they're nicely compressed and refined. 
What you can do in the meantime, though, is if you're building a new site, you can compress the images before you upload them. So you can go straight to a tool like compressor.io, upload the image to there, rescale them all, and you should be able to select multiple images and drag them in to shrink down multiple images in one go. Another option is if you're editing your photos in something like Adobe Photoshop, you can choose compression settings on that. But what I generally find is that this website is better than Photoshop for getting the right balance between file size and not losing our detail in the compression. So I'm going to go to the blog, find the area where the image has been uploaded. This is the one here. Edit the post. In this case for blogs, we go to options. And now I'm going to remove the old image and upload the new one. Select it from our downloads. Again, we can click and drag the image in, and now we've got our new compressed image on our website. This is an optional step. It will improve the performance of your website. You've got to make the decision as to whether that improvement is worth it based on the time it takes to do this each time. Of course, you can do multiple images and compress them in one go. But here we now we can see the new compressed image, and at this size, you can hardly tell the difference. So what I recommend is definitely do this for key pages on your website. If you go into the blog post itself, we might have a larger version of that image. Now this page isn't going to take too long to load anyway, simply because it's largely text-based with, with a handful of images and some thumbnails in here as well. But if we, up, as we've compressed the thumbnail here, that's going to carry across all variations of that thumbnail regardless of the page. So just by going through that step and really compressing these images, we don't need to worry too much about the post page itself, although you can tweak that if you want to. There we go. That's how we can rinse and repeat this process to really tighten up and speed up the load speed of your website. Hope you found this helpful. Enjoy and we'll catch up soon.